Hey, hello everyone, welcome. In this video, I will be talking about input buffering in Celeste. Input buffering is a very important concept to understand in Celeste because it's used pretty much everywhere for movement and it allows for insane strats and setups like these to be possible. So input buffering is a leniency mechanic that the devs put in to make the game feel better. Without it, games can feel unforgiving or unresponsive. Input buffering allows you to start inputting an action before it can actually happen. And if you do that, the action will happen on the very first frame it can be performed. So here, for example, we can see Madeline is jumping on the ground. This action, jumping on the ground, can only be performed when Madeline is on the ground. But with input buffering, we can actually input jump while she is still in midair, just before she touched the ground, and the jump will still come out. And it will come out on the very first frame it can happen. This is input buffering. Okay, so for how it actually works, so input buffering window is 4 frames. And the frame after that is the very first frame the action can happen. And I label it here as the action frame. So on the action frame, the game will check if an input is being pressed or not. If it's being pressed, then it will perform that input. So actions that are bufferable usually have at least 5 frame window to execute. So 4 frame window to buffer and then 1 frame window when it can actually happen. But if you press jump too early here, so more than 4 frames before touching the ground, you will not get the jump. You can also fail to buffer inputs by releasing the input too early. So after pressing the input in the buffer window, you also need to keep holding that input until it happens. So don't release it too early. This is a pretty common mistake to make. Now that you know the basics of how it works, I will explain how some game mechanics interact with input buffering. Just like jump, you can also input buffer a dash, but unlike jump, there is something important, very important about dash that you need to be aware of, and that thing is dash cooldown. Dash cooldown is a timer that runs when you dash. When this timer is running, you can't do a dash. Dash cooldown lasts for 15 frames, so you can only dash once every 15 frames at maximum. This is always true even though you are cancelling the dash with a jump or something else. So even if you are doing a hyper or super, you still only be able to dash every 15 frames at maximum. We can use this property of a dash to our advantage with input buffering to do dashes on specific positions very consistently. Also, because bubbles are basically the same as a dash, dash cooldown also applies to bubbles. So, for example, in this room in 5B, after taking the bubble to the left here, you can actually buffer an up dash, and it will line up for this wall bounce. And it is impossible to dash early and bonk, because dash cooldown. So the, the fastest dash after taking the bubble left here is way after the ceiling. Screen transitions are very important in Celeste. Screen transitions last for 40 frames, and during that time, we can't control Madeline. However, just like normal input buffering, we can buffer inputs near the end of the transition so the inputs will happen in the very first frame we can control Madeline again. Visually, you can see transitions ending when the camera slows down to a stop and then it stops for a bit. So to buffer, aim to input roughly as it stops. It's pretty hard but it's used throughout the run so it's good to practice the timing. But there are some important things that you should know though. Okay, so the first one is the dash cooldown. Bringing back the last section again, you must not forget about dash cooldown. Dash cooldown timer does not tick down during transitions. 
so it will pause and then continue after transition. So if you dash close to the transition, you might not be able to buffer a dash out of that transition. This is quite important to know, mostly for higher level strat like grounded ultra strats like these. Alright, so the second thing is vertical or upwards transitions. These transitions are different from normal horizontal ones. So on vertical transitions, the game locks you out, out of dashing for 12 frames. So you cannot dash for 12 frames after the transition. And yeah, the game just gives you 12 frames of dash cooldown regardless of what you do. This is why you can't just buffer a down dash to do buffs drop. So this can make buffering dashes on vertical transition feel awkward because you have to wait a bit longer than usual. But now that you know it, uh, you should be able to adjust to it. And this only matters for dashes. For jumps and other things, you can buffer it normally. Okay, so the third thing is transition length. There's a couple things that can make transitions longer, like if there's an unbroken breakable block, it's small but can be noticeable. Lighting changes can also make transitions longer. If you've run any percent with 5B, you've probably noticed that this room before 5A cassette room has weirdly long screen transition. Dash crystals. Getting dash crystals will cause the game to stop doing anything for 3 frames. This is called freeze frames. Even though nothing is happening, buffer window still takes into account these freeze frames. Unlike dash crystals, hitting a spring does not cause freeze frames. So here, when you hit the spring, you will get your dash back and you will be able to start dashing on the same frame. So freeze frames can mess you up if you're trying to buffer a dash on dash crystals with the same timing as other buffered inputs, because you might input it too early. This does not mean the window is smaller, it's just different. So for buffering dashes on dash crystals, it's better to aim it during the crystal freeze frames. So visually, aim when you're just touching the dash crystal or very very close to it. Hearts are pretty interesting. So if you dash on the first frame you touch a heart, you can dash to any direction. This is what so many people do in the end of modded maps. You can actually buffer this action if you don't have any dash available to spend. If you do have a dash though, you cannot buffer it and it makes this extremely hard. Buffering is inputting something before it can happen. So if something else can happen if you press that input, then that will happen first, which makes buffering not possible. Another example of this is fast bubbling. If you don't have a dash, you can buffer fast bubbles so it happens as soon as it's possible. But if you do have a dash, you cannot buffer it because you will just dash normally. Next one is battling boss. After hitting battling boss, you will get freeze frames and then you will get dash cooldown. So you have to wait because you cannot do anything for a few frames, and then you cannot dash for a few frames. To buffer dashes for battling boss, people use specific cues on the background to see when to buffer a dash. After the freeze frames, while you cannot dash yet, you can actually do other inputs like jump. So in some rooms, while you cannot dash yet, you can actually jump on the wall first and then do a dash. Battling orbs in summit is similar to battling boss but you don't need to wait as long, so you can practice the timing easier. Next one is dream blocks. You can buffer jumps out of dream blocks. So you can jump slightly before leaving dream blocks to get a buffered dream jump. You can also dream jump after leaving dream blocks and still get a dream jump, although it's not a buffered dream jump. So yeah, dream jumps are very lenient. Also, if you jump on the buffer window and then jump again after exiting dream block, you can actually get a dream double jump, which is a pretty cool tech. However, 
The buffer window for buffering dash out of dream blocks is not the same. It's the same difficulty, but the window starts when Madeline is already out of the dream block, not before. For more info, you can check the Dream Hyper document link below. You can climb gem on moving blocks and core blocks without activating them by doing a buffered climb gems. Except this has nothing to do with buffered climb gems. You don't actually need a buffered climb gem to do this. It works because you cannot grab anything while you are moving upwards. So most of these are not buffered climb gems. Madeline just keeps moving upwards so she cannot grab and activate the block. And I failed it once there because I actually moved downwards that time. Another thing that you can do with climb gems is corner boost. I won't explain how corner boosts work in this video because it's already too long, but you should pretty much always be buffering jump on corner boost to not fail it, losing speed or getting a bad corner boost. Pause buffer is a very useful attack in Celeste. Like any other input, you can buffer pause normally. But you can also buffer inputs coming out of a pause, including pause itself. This allows for frame advancing and inputting things frame perfectly. This can make previously hard, precise, unbuffered inputs to be buffered and done with high consistency like second block list. For more detailed explanation about pause buffering, you can check this video by Prothian, linked below. Alright, that's all from me. I can't cover everything and every little details because Celeste is just so complex, but I hope this video has been helpful for you. If there's anything wrong or something important that I didn't mention, feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and see you next time, bye!